Good evening, thanks for coming. If you have a mobile phone, if you'd like to put it on silent, please, thank you. Right, a massive welcome for the first time. Darren Nesbitt, musician, activist and researcher with The Earth is Not a Spinning Ball. A subject, a subject capable of splitting ranks and currently attracting a lot of attention with many questions being asked and less being answered. Darren is here tonight with some of those questions and a bag full of observations, most strange. Some of which show NASA, that organisation with a budget of billions, dealing in untruths. Darren's research points to the Earth being other than spherical, delivering a broadside at scientific consensus. Please fasten your seatbelts for Darren Nesbitt. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, nice to see so many here tonight. Um, my name's Darren Nesbitt. I believe the Earth is a fixed stationary plane. Um, in 2016, that's, that should make me sound like quite a nutter. Um, obviously, a lot of people here have already been doing some research. This has been going on for a year and a half, two years. Um, the, the, you know, it's, it's really exploded across truth movements and truth seekers. Some people say it's, uh, it's divisive, it doesn't matter. Uh, some people can't see it, can't see the deception. I'm here tonight to show you that um, what, you've already, what, what you might have already researched in terms of truth, in terms of false flags, 9-11, occult symbolism, Illuminati, all that stuff is all present in the, in the globe Earth, the spinning globe Earth, NASA, all of that stuff is all connected. There's no separation between the lies. Um, I know British people don't like to take part in audiences, but I just want a show of hands. I've already spoke to a few people tonight. How many people here already think like me? They've been doing research for weeks, months or years. I believe the Earth is a fixed stationary plane. Excellent. So we've got about half a dozen. That's, that's what I like to see. Okay, that's what I want. I didn't want everybody to be, you know, to be already converted because most of the world's like that at the moment. You know, 90% I'd say of people just think this is crazy. It's, you know, it's lunatic as the, uh, as the piece says. But I, I want to ask you then, obviously not the people who believe it's a station of play. I want to ask the people who believe that I'm about to talk the biggest load of nonsense and I'm off my head. I want to hear from you why you believe the Earth is a spinning globe. What, what are the reasons why you believe? You know, shout them out. I'm going to write them down on here for you. Chuck, just shout them out. Well, I don't, I don't spherical. Sorry? Everything is spherical. What, what do you mean by everything is spherical? Everything, do you mean? Everything, every single thing, even on a smooth flatter, the particles that make it up are spherical. Okay. And you're exactly, it's provable by examining it under a microscope. Okay, so what, what you're saying is that at the smallest point, everything is a ball at all times? Yeah, every, yeah, yeah everything, everything is, yeah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I mean, there's, 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 surely, there's surely more major ones than that. I mean, I will, I'll, I'll, we, we will include that. But why do you, come on, why do you believe the Earth is a globe? Because that's what we were taught. Okay, we, we, we know that's what we're taught, but what, come on, what, what observable proofs are you? What do you have? The stars going around the planet. Okay, so the, we, 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 see the, we see the stars in the sky moving around, don't we? The sun and moon. Stars? Movement of the sun and moon? Uh, well, I, again, I don't think the tides directly show that we're, you know, that we're on a spinning low, but there, mu there must be, you know, at the end of the day, 90% of people in here have, believe that we're on a spinning globe. You must have reasons for it. Yeah, when the, uh, when the shadow of the uh, night gets chased away by the sun in the morning. Okay, so day and night. Yeah, it goes away progressively. Yeah, day and night. Yeah. Sun and moon. Day and night. What else? Can't see the southern hemisphere stars from the north, and you can't see the northern hemisphere stars from the south. Different, different stars in different hemispheres. What else? What's the number one reason why you believe the Earth is a globe? That's the photographs. You've seen images of it, haven't you? Yeah. Isn't that the number one reason why you believe the Earth? If you've never seen an image of the Earth as a globe, it's, it's, it's a pretty hard sell, to be honest. There you go. The moon, the, the, the other. That's what you were saying, wasn't it? Other. Other bodies look round. The sun looks round in the sky, Jupiter looks round, the moon looks round, the stars look round, they all around. Well, why isn't this round? Yeah? That's another one. And then we've got images as well, haven't we? Like I say, images of Earth. What else? 
Are these the only five reasons? Because I'm going to give you about 30 or 40 tonight that will show you that the Earth is a fixed plane. Are these the only reasons why you think it's a, it's a ball or a globe? Come on, you must, must have more reasons than that. The Mercator map. Say again? The Mercator map. The Mercator map? Made, made. Sorry? It was drawn out so that when you put it together as an object, yeah. three-dimensional object, it matched the, the globe as he believed it to be. Uh, <coughs> Well, we can test it. We can test this out if you if you like at some point because we've got a globe and we've got the Mercator map, and we'll see if it actually fits round. No, that's not the original Mercator map. This is the Mercator map. Okay. Well, the, the point I wanted to make there, so is, is the Mercator map looks pretty square and flat to me. <coughs> that's the that's the ball. That's the globe. Anything else? I'll, I'll be honest with you. When I when I when I when I did this when I did this, I, I come up with a lot more. I come up with a lot more. Reasons. Why else? Uh, in the Arctic and Antarctic regions, yeah. the sun doesn't rise for months. Um, okay, but I'm, I, you know, <coughs> again, that's not first hand knowledge as such. Um, go on, what else? Bob? You and I have had this conversation before. Go on. Seasons. I've, I've sailed to seas. Seasons? Yeah. And, you, and you've seen. And I have seen the curvature. You've seen the curvature. Anybody seen it? Okay, so you've seen the curvature on a boat? Anybody seen the curvature from the plane? Yes. Yeah. There we go. So I'm, I'm happy to give you reasons why you believe the Earth is a globe. <laughs> so I've seen the curve from a plane. Yeah. Anything else? It was fairly obvious when Felix Baumgartner went up to 127,000 feet. Okay, images of Earth, images of curved, of curved horizon. Ships disappear over the horizon. Okay. Ships, anything, like lighthouses, buildings, talk, whatever, everything disappears over the horizon, doesn't it? You see a ship, it disappears, it goes over the horizon. That's why you believe the Earth is a curving ball, yeah? You know when you know one comes back? Yeah. It, it, it appears to come back, say... Uh, Mass first? Not first, yeah. Mass first. Okay, my handwriting is absolutely atrocious because we don't really really write, write much anymore with our hands. We use computers, okay? Um, I'm quite disappointed to be honest, you have to be, you have to be given a quite, quite a nudge for it, but we've come up with may, maybe 10 things there and I'll show you. <coughs> Sorry, go on. Yeah, what about that man that's just gone into orbit? Okay, it but... Showed I showed him up there and it, and it showed him, you couldn't see through the window. Images of Earth from space. Yeah, that's Im images of Earth from space. Yeah, every single image you've seen of Earth from space is, the, is probably the main reason. You know, there's lots of, there's lots of other ones. I think seeing the curve from a plane or uh, you know on, on the water or what have you or even up a mountain that would be one as well Brian? Most of the navigational tools that we use to sail the seas Yeah Well I mean you, you say that but again you know we, we, we could get we could get planes and pilots and their their navigation is level all the time or what you know, and, and that, that's the equivalent. Or what, what I need is your senses. No, you because mean the lunar eclipse, no. not the phase of the moon. The phase of the moon are not created by the shadow of the Earth, unfortunately. Otherwise, I'd be able to prove very, very easily that it, that, that wasn't the case. Sorry. No, no, the lunar shadows cause it, lunar shadow is not caught. It only happens three or four times a year. Do you, okay. want to, you, do you want to say the lunar shadow or the phases of the moon? Lunar shadow. Lunar shadow okay, I'll pull that down because that's a, that's a fairly that, that's a fairly co fairly common one. <coughs> There we go. And I think I don't mean in the original list. Lunar shadow. We've got. We finally got to the bottom of the. We've got to the bottom of the paper. Um, what I want to bear in mind, as I'm going to show you things tonight, is the difference between different types of different types of knowledge that we can have. Um, primary versus secondary versus tertiary knowledge. Primary knowledge is everything that you can that you that, that you can sense for yourself. It comes in your eyes, your balance, your ears, everything else. Now, yes, of course, our senses can be deceived. You know, there are plenty of experiments, plenty of psychological experiments to show you that. But if every day that you've been born, the sky is blue and it's not been chemtrailed and covered over, if the sky is blue and everybody else says the sky is blue, the sky is blue. Yeah, that's what our senses tell us. If you can't trust your senses on repeated, um, you know, repeated experiences, then we're lost, we're senseless. Yeah, this is what common sense is. Yeah, secondary knowledge is people, what people have told you. Primary knowledge will be an experiment you've done for yourself. So if you've sailed and you've taken measurements and you've done this, that and the other, that's, that's first hand knowledge. But an experiment that somebody else has done, that they tell you about, that's secondary knowledge, unless you've repeated it for yourself. 
I think tertiary knowledge is better because tertiary knowledge for me is the is the primary knowledge of other people, so hearsay, but it's hearsay times a thousand or ten thousand. We know that it's light here and it's dark, it's yet dark in America. Yeah, we know that because we can make phone calls and that's what people, you know, it's, it's a general, um, it's, it, 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 it's, it's first hand knowledge that can be spread about, we can trust it. We can certainly trust you better than secondary knowledge, but secondary knowledge can easily become primary or tertiary knowledge. So if you can, receive, if, if you can experience it with your own senses first hand and do that repeatedly, it's more likely to be, you know, you can confirm it with your own senses. Just make the distinction between those, those two types of, of knowledge. Something can be perfectly logical, work mathematically beautifully, yeah, and not actually be related to the real world either. Yeah, all these distinctions matter. <clears throat> like everything else, all the points I want to make, I want it to be a springboard for your own research. The idea is not for me to get up here, show you, you know, a, a bunch of flat horizon, a bunch of, a bunch of other mathematical stuff and go, you know, to make the thing. So actually have a springboard for each, each part. Go and investigate for yourself. You don't have to trust me. I'm not the news, I'm not the BBC news reader. I'm not going to stay in your eyes and hypnotise and say, this is it. And don't believe anything else and don't research that. And now here's EastEnders. Yeah. The idea is everybody in this room is, is, is interested in seeking truth. So certainly use it as a springboard for your own research. Like anything else, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. It's only changes perspective. People go get kind of crazy with this for, for many different reasons but nothing actually changes you know things change spiritually in the way you I suppose the way you act and everything else but in terms of the world doesn't change because your senses are still seeing the same thing anyway yeah your senses are still because the model in your head changes and finally <clears throat> yeah like I say it does lead to the bigger questions of where we are where, where, where we're from what's our origins how did the universe come about how did the earth come about where am I from what's my purpose because again, those, I mean, those are the biggest questions, and if anybody that's, that's, that's curious and seeking truth uh, certainly wants those answered. So that's why it's there important. There is nobody who believes that the Earth is a fixed stationary plane that believes so because of one or two pieces of evidence. They didn't watch one video and go, oh my God, the Earth. It's a weight of evidence, it needs building up. Yeah? People have a confirmation bias, so that if you've come tonight, or if you're watching this, and this is just too ludicrous, and it doesn't matter what evidence you're going to show me, I don't care how many pieces of evidence you're going to show me, I know the Earth is a ball, then we're just wasting our time, that's not the, that, that, and that's not scientific inquiry either. You know? let, us, let, uh, um, let me present the evidence and let it build up. Yeah? Take each piece of evidence on its own merit. Yeah? Rather than, it can't be right, the Earth's a ball, it doesn't matter what I show you. you know? it's, it's actually reverse thinking, isn't it, when we're, when we're, actually, after, when we're actually after truth. <clears throat> We need to keep an open mind. <clears throat> I'm not going to ask for a, a, a show of hands, but I'm assuming everybody is aware that they're committing false flags and false histories and this war on terror. Um, they're, they're capable of, 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 uh, of achieving mass deceptions through mass programming, mass lies through the mainstream media, through the telly screen. As it's called in, in almost 1984. I'm sure, everybody's aware of that. Everybody's aware of the attacks on our health from everywhere, from EMFs, from chemtrails, vaccinations, all over the place. They're lying about it all the time. Pharmaceuticals, doctors just pan out pharmaceuticals, and they might actually, you know, be, be useful for the for the original ailment, but they just give you ten more ailments, and they keep you going on and on forever. Yeah, food, GMOs, all the different kinds of food, all poisonous to us. Yeah. Um, if you, I'm assuming everybody's aware that <laughs> our whole money and banking system, owned by the Rothschilds, owned by the central criminal central banking system. If you haven't, if you're not, if, you, if you're not aware of how money, you know how money in the central banking system works, the best video to watch on it is Bill Stills, the Money Masters, on YouTube from 1996. It's, it's three, three and a half hours. And if you, you know anybody that's ever wondered why the economy is the way it is, why things are the way they are, that will answer many, many questions. Um, we're well aware that politics is not. You know, politics is just an illusion. There's no choice. It doesn't matter if it's left or right. The, the owners own both parties. They like the left and they like the, and they like the right. They like, you know, it doesn't matter who you vote for. They're getting in. Presidents aren't elected. They're not elected. They're selected. So it doesn't matter, you know, which Democrat or Republican can get in. The rulers are going to get their way anyway. They have a lot to do with symbolism as well. Again, this is Conspiracy 101, along with probably the lunar landings and the New World Order. Uh, one of the first things you come across is... <laughs> He's gone the other way now. Um, the other thing you come, come across is the, is the pyramid with the all-seeing eye. That is the all-seeing eye of Horus or Lucifer. Yeah? And it's on the back of the dollar bill. We're not making this up. This is not, you know, any, anybody can go, go, go and check that out. These guys are into symbolism, they're into numerology, um, and they're into deceiving the whole world. Um, people are aware that NASA 
the moon landings, Freemasonry, and the Jesuits, media propaganda, mass, pro mass programming, symbolism, symbolism and numerology figure highly in these guys' operations. We, we see their hand all over false flags, all over buildings and masonry and, and, and what have you. Like I say, it's all over the flat earth as well. It's all over the globe earth. Deception. Yeah? This is the number one reason why we think, why I thought for most of my life, and most people were, whatever they think now, why we believe that we lived on a spinning ball because of this image or these types of images. But this image was shown to us for a very long time. It was taken supposedly on the way back, no, the, 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 the last Apollo mission, on the way back from the moon. It's the Earth. Um, uh, obviously it's a picture of the Earth, supposedly. Um, but we've been shown these images all our lives. When you go to school, there's a globe sitting in the classroom. If you're on the computer and you want to show an icon for knowledge and learning, it's always a globe. Yeah, it's funny how that works. But this is mass. This is mass propaganda. This is mass, mass mind control and propaganda all the way through. This is secondary knowledge. Yeah, we're shown that and told that's the solar system. That's the way it works. You've got the big sun in the middle and all the planets revolve around it but nobody's ever seen that we've never seen a photograph of it <clears throat> we've never seen um, you know real part we've certainly never seen any any animation of it even though there's supposed to be a probe out in pluto at the moment and um, nobody's ever seen the solar system like this it's always graphics it's always secondary knowledge this is primary knowledge although you know we weren't up there in the balloon itself you can go and watch many of these videos amateur amateur weather balloon videos these go up 20 to 25 miles, so actually three times as high as you go on as you go on your plane. Now, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I can't see no curve to the Earth there. In all fairness, a lot of these a lot of these things have GoPro cameras on them, so the horizon will flip all ways. It will be as you'd expect. First, the curve, then it goes completely flat, and then it will go concave and it wobbles out. And when it starts leveling off, fully enough, the horizon starts leveling off as well. Yeah? But it's impossible. You can, make a cur uh, you can make a straight line look curved with a GoPro lens, with barrel lens distortion. But you cannot make a curved line look straight with a lens. You can in Photoshop, obviously, post-processing. But you can't make a curved line look straight. So how can we ever look straight? If you've been shown images like this when you go to your classroom all the time, we just assume the Earth's flat. It's all about programming. Now let me show, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> digress, because there's a few things that people say, flat Earth, these, this is not the flat earth, it's not big balls and you know the earth is in the middle, the only difference is the earth in the middle and everything else is spinning around it. That's not the flat earth. This isn't the flat earth either, this is actually a concave earth, it's another um, alternative view at the moment. The idea is that we're, we're at, it's still a ball but we're on the inside of it, you can get the perspective there, kind of shows it there a bit better. We're kind of living on the inside of it. With the unit, with all the stars and the moon and everything spinning inside. Unfortunately, that comes up with the same or the reverse problems of, as living on a globe. Because if you're looking into the distance and, and obviously the world curves around you, you're going to see far further into the distance than you actually can. Yeah, it's going to curve. It's going to curve up. This isn't the flat Earth either. It's probably a bit closer. Now here we have a here we have the the main flat Earth map as promoted by 95% of Flat Earthers, Eric Dubay, Samuel Rowbottom originally. Um, everybody shows this map. I have serious problems with it. I have serious problems with it for several reasons, which I'm going to go through quite quickly. Um, but it's just as erroneous as the globe Earth. And, and this is the PSYOP. This is the shill, as far as I'm concerned, because the Flat Earth movement's been really raging for a, just you know over a year year and a half what have you and you know it's all you know this person's a shill that person's a shill etc etc you know things break down and it gets annoying i just did a quick experiment this 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 flat earth map this circular flat earth map comes from if you get a a square mercator yeah put it into photoshop and give it the polar coordinates and then resize it so it's square you get exactly this map you can make it yourself from the square map that's all it is Right. There's some serious problems with it on various levels. You can look into it yourself. I'm going to go through, like I say, about half a dozen of them. If you look at the size of Australia there, I can get my little. Does this work? Got one. Got one in the software. So there's Australia. If you look, it's about the same size as Russia. It's bigger than the whole of North America. 
North America is smaller than South America on here. That's not actually the case in real life. Right? Because map makers can make maps and sailors can go, you know, sailors can sail and airplanes can take aerial photographs. Yeah. So we know that these land mass sizes, I mean Australia's nearly as, nearly as long as Africa there. Yeah. It's completely distorted and it's distorted because all they've done is they've taken the square map and like I say, put it through the polar coordinates so it looks like that. But you see here, North America is far bigger than South America. And Australia. It's not really as big as Russia, is it? Yeah. The other huge problem with this map is they say Antarctica is the edge. It's around the outside. It's been 60,000 miles. It's been guarded by some Antarctic force. Well, we've never seen anybody. We've never had a whistleblower. And who wants that for a job? I mean, you might, they, might, they might pay you £5,000 a week, but you're never going to see any action because nobody's ever going to go for a start. And you can go all the way all over the Antarctica. It's not as restricted as, as we told. Quite obviously, if you're going down there, you want to take precautions. It's going to be very cold, so you go in a group and what have you. But it's not a restricted area. Yeah, I'm not trying to debunk the flat Earth here, by the way. The Earth is most definitely a fixed stationary plane, but this is not the model of it. And I think that the, the, the problem with it is, I'm going to take questions later. Um, the problem with it is, is it puts people off. Because if you say, okay, well, the, Earth, the Earth's not a globe, and here's why, and I can, I can show you, you know, many, many reasons for it. So well, what's the alternative? But this alternative doesn't work either for many reasons. Nobody's ever seen the edge. That's the number one. If there's an edge, nobody's ever seen it or, or photographed it or what have you. Yeah, we've seen, you know, tall mountains, you know, tall ice mountains, but, you know, we don't know. We don't know that, 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 that that's definitely, you know, the, the Antarctic edge. There's no force guarding it. Anybody can go there. Um, the 24-hour daylight and, and night as well at both poles. You get 24-hour Arctic daylight, you get 24-hour Antarctic daylight. It's another lie from some of the, a lot of the flat earth videos that they don't have 24 hour daylight, uh, daylight in the Antarctic. And I've seen it on five or six different, completely different time lapses. Yeah, plus it's reported in time and date, plus it's reported all over the world. Yeah, that both ends, and again, that's not possible. Yeah, if the sun's doing, if the sun's, it's not, obviously it's not got, not, this, not got this kind of reach. There's 24 hour daylight at both poles, not at the same time, obviously, in the, the respective winters and summers. Equal day and night lengths, at equidistant places north and south of the equator and I'll give you some examples of that shortly, I've got, got two examples for you uh, but in uh, the 21st of June north is e equal to the 21st of December south so again if you're if the sun is supposedly going around the Tropic of Cancer here and then it goes wider it goes down to the Tropic of Capricorn for you know for the southern solstice then it's got a lot further I can't I should maybe I should have a laser pen but it's got a lot further to cover Quite clearly, it's got two, two or three times further to cover. But the, again, through tertiary knowledge, people don't say in Australia the sun goes three times three times faster across the sky. It still takes it still takes the same time. It still goes at the same speed. So there's a, so there's another problem with it there. There's, there's equatorial equatorial sundials. So the sundials that specifically only work on the equator. And again, on the equinoxes, the sun goes in a straight path over the equator. Yeah, so at least twice a year. Again, if the sun's constantly circling round, it's just going tighter and tighter around the north and then further out to the south, it's always circling. You'll never see it go straight across the sky. But again, that's not people's experiences at the equator itself. The stars go in different directions in, in different hemispheres. This is a, you know, it's a, it's a big um, falling down point for the flat Earth. It was, oh, hang on, the, 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 the stars go in different directions. This model can't be true, therefore the Earth's not flat. This is my problem with this model. You can find so many holes in it, and then people go, well, that's not right, let's go back to the globe. But neither's true. Flight routes, I'll come on to in a sec, I've got a, a, a slide on it. The Flat Earth Society, we know it, it's, it, it's co opted intelligence. It's um, uh, counterintelligence, it's, it's um, what do you call it, uh, controlled opposition. Yeah, and the UN we know is, is, end, is, is New World Order, so why, why would they have the real flag? Why would they have the real map of the Earth as their flag? And why would the Flat Earth Society um, you know, be giving us the right, the right shape of the map? Like I say, all you need to do is put a square map into Photoshop and do the polar coordinates filter. Yeah, you'll still get a you'll make it square and you'll see exactly this map. And like I say, the reason why it's, why it's around is to put people off. Yeah, the old, both alters, the old Hegelian dialectic. Yeah, well, it can't be. It's, it's not a globe because we're not spinning around. Here's the alternative. That's not right either, as far as I'm concerned. I will get. I will get onto what what I think it may be. But my 
<clears throat> my hope by doing these talks and by spreading the word is that people, independent scientists and researchers will go out and find it for themselves, set up their own balloons, do their own tests, observational tests, map makers, whatever. Yeah? If we know that the Earth is not a globe and we need to know what it is, all bets are off again. Science is open again. Yeah? Discovery is open again. We haven't discovered everything. That's a lie. We can start using our brains and our intelligence and our resources again. Beirut, 33 degrees north, Sydney, 33 degrees south. You can see the virtually exact equidistant from the equator. You can see the solstice day length there within a second of each other in terms of the, the length of daylight north and south of the equator. Again, proving that the sun can't be going further and further. And again, Swansea, uh, twinned with Rio Gallegos. Again, you can see within 15 seconds, the amount of daylight is equidistant each side of the equator. And just one on the flights, Auckland to uh, Buenos Aires, a flight 14, 13 to 14 to 15 hours. Um, I'm pretty sure somebody just took that actually and did a video of it and, and showed it. I mean, these flights exist. But again, if you're trying to, you know, get from there on the flat earth map, it takes, you know, you're going right the way across the world. It's supposed to take 30 odd hours, but it only takes 14, 15. So this map does not work. And I wanted to get that out of the way before, before I show you. Oh, go back. <clears throat> very quickly because again I think uh, you know proving that the moon landings were a hoax is conspiracy one on one it was one of the first videos I ever saw one of the first um, programs I ever saw um, I will go through it very very quickly that's quite a famous scene from Kubrick's um, The Shining as he pays homage to um, his participation in the moon landings quite simple and straightforward you've got the sun behind you here here's the astronaut taking the picture and you've got the shadow of his thing. So quite clear, the sun is behind us. It's, it's you know, we're, in the, we're in, the, in the fourth wall. Yeah? So what is causing the shadow here if the sun is behind us? Now, when they went to the moon, they didn't take any sources. They didn't take any lamps or lights or what have you. The sun is the only source. It has to come from one direction. It's behind us. And you can see it's behind us because the shadow of the astronaut's there. But over on this side, if the sun's behind us, what is causing that shadow? And if you think that's, well, hang on a minute, that's a one-off. Look at this rock here. Look at the shape, look at, look at, look at the, the direction of the shadow there. Is that going in the same direction as these? There is more than one light source on this. You can look at hundreds and hundreds of photos for yourself. I'm only going to give you a couple of examples of each one. But you can examine all these for yourself. There's plenty of, obviously, articles and websites and what have you. This is a famous one from a video. Again, you can see shadow from the astronauts going that way. Shadows on the rocks are going that way. Yeah? The source of the light is here. It's not 90 million miles away on the sun. The more you look at these, the more you realise that it's a film studio, yeah? pristine equipment and all the shots. Yeah, this is the first shot taken by uh, Neil Armstrong when he got off the lander, yeah? but it's showing no door, everything's pristine again. There's, there's, it's, it, it's, it's, uh, it's touched down on the fine dusty surface of the moon and you know, it's, it's, again it's pristine, there's no, there's no sign of, it looks like it's just been put there by stage hands to me. Again we have the astronaut here is obviously behind him. The light source is behind him because we can see the shadow, but he's lit up full front. There's more than one light source here, quite clearly. You can, you can examine any, any amount of moon photos you want and notice these things for yourself if you're into photography. It becomes very obvious very quickly. Um, we can also see as well, if you look behind, that's, the, that's where the, the set end, that's where the, you know, the, the, the edge, that's the horizon where everything dips over. But you can see in his reflection, yeah, you can see that there's another astronaut taking that picture, obviously taking the picture of him. You can see the, the, the reflection of him, but you can see again, you can see the horizon line behind him as well. So how big is this moon? And it's, I mean, I know it's only supposed to be a quarter of the size of the Earth, but the Earth's a pretty big place. But you can see, so you've, you've got from, the, from this back here, and then however far that way, it looks about 200 yards, 150 yards across. All you need to do is be sceptical and start looking for yourself at these things and you go, hang on a minute. This is a famous, this is Kubrick's famous, um, you know, invention for, for, for um, 2001 Space Odyssey. If you look here, there's a line going right across. This is where the, the set ends and these are painted in. These are painted hills. You can tell the difference because how long would it take, do you think, to walk over to the edge there? A minute, two minutes. Compare that to one on Earth. Yeah, well you can see that's real depth, it's got real, that's a real mountain, that's a real, that's a real landscape. Yeah, that's another real landscape, the Grand Canyon. 
please. It looked like, you know, you could run around it in five minutes. No problem at all. Well, I don't know what that blue light is. Again, this is an original NASA photo. There's a, there's a blue light. You can't see any stars in any of the, any of the shots of the moon, but there's a nice big blue, blue flashing light there. <laughs> get everywhere. Nice fake. Yeah. Straight line mountain. Fake. It's sort of clearly fake. As soon as you take those glasses off, it's clearly fake. That's a real mountain. It's going to take a, a good few hours to get over there. That's not. Don't forget, when this was shown in 1969, this was how it was shown. We didn't all have iPhones and laptops and HD screens and stuff. This is how people saw it. We've landed on the moon. We were so much more, uh, so much less cynical then for a start, but this is what we saw it on, and it probably looked great. And we probably looked, we, looked, we saw the rocket going up, and we've all been told this. So don't forget how, how the world looked. And now it's a done deal. This is 50 years ago now, 40, what are we up to? 47 years? It's a long time ago. But it's a done deal. We don't, um, you know, people don't generally go around questioning the moon. NASA are up to stuff. I, you know, we've got the ISS and they're doing Pluto and you know they're doing all this stuff. But because they've already set in stone that they went to the moon, yeah, we can already do that. We don't go back though. Notice three hundred and forty-eight thousand, I think. No, three hundred eight thousand. Uh, this moon rock was valued. That was given by Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong to the Dutch Prime Minister. Only it's petrified wood. They've done tests on it. Oh, we'll keep it as a we'll keep it as a curiosity spot. Yeah, we brought this rock from the moon. Not from the moon at all. The LEM. More pictures. I look at this. The more it looks like I don't know a school science project. Gold foil and hanging wire and bits of curtain rod and. You know, and don't forget that the, the bottom part is the engines where it all, you know, where, where obviously it gets about, the boost and everything, and they actually live in the, in the top part of it. I've got a, there's no toilet in there by the way, nowhere to store the waste, and they did mention that was a problem, they've got diarrhea and this, that and the other. Oxygen to live on water, where's the food? And can they recycle the CO2 or so do, do they have technology that we don't know about now? Because apparently we've got a big problem with CO2, so they tell us. They did, yeah. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a whole, there's a whole. Oh, on the next slide, there's a whole list of, um, you know. Again, like I say, I want it to be a, a platform for further research, so I'll, we'll put it up. Have a look for yourself. You can do some calculations that shows you exactly how much oxygen and water and CO2 and everything else that, that they have. But I, I, this is a replica. Obviously, they left the original lander on the moon. But this is a, re a replica of the 69 moon. Now, the famous, the famous um, shot of Neil Armstrong coming down the ladder there with his backpack on and you know his big suit and all the rest of it. I just imagine him coming down, he was a lot bigger than the ladder. I imagine him trying to get in. How was he getting in there? You know what I mean? That's, 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 that's smaller than a micro, I reckon. And you, you've got your big backpack on. Nothing, nothing, start, nothing makes sense when you start looking into it and you start adding it up and start looking at the numbers. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go into the details there, but this is where they live. This is the LEM. So they hung hammocks across when they weren't doing whatever, you know, trying not to defecate on each other I suppose um, and eat and do all the you know keep all the scientific experiments and, and you know I'm not sure where the car was we've got we've got a car here as well <laughs> the car was slapped to the side there's there's no there's no photos of them assembling this car this is what in 1969 by the way they didn't take the car then they took the car for I think three of the later missions but it's all the same same type of same type of equipment they've got a car there there's no you know there's no pictures of them actually putting it together it only went at eight, eight miles an hour. Was there any point? <laughs> Backyard science projects. The computing power that took us to the moon, allegedly. Not even got as good as an iPhone. You can go, if you've got an iPhone, you could probably go to the moon tomorrow if you like. You need, you need one of these curtain rods and uh, one of these lunar modules. Um, 32 kilobytes of storage. So in that computer, it's got to remember all the trajectories and all the you know all the mad calculations that you, it must have had to do to get all the orbits right because if you read how the rocket then they, they got in the command module and the command module got into the lunar module and the lunar module set down and the all i mean that's really complicated stuff but they did it all on well that should be a fisher a fisher price speak and spell i think <laughs> it's quite impressive there's a there's another there's another problem that they have just with time yeah <clears throat> it shows you there's a list here of obviously how long, how many, how many excursions they did. 
and how long they were actually on the moon's surface. Now don't forget, obviously, when they land, they've got to check the equipment, they've got to do all these scientific experiments, um, collecting rocks, uh, obviously, you know, take care of the, you know, the, 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 the personal stuff. Um, yeah, at the same time, they, they took a, a hell of a lot of photos as well. Uh, again, study it, study it for yourself. 5,700 photos of, of six missions in 4,800 minutes. They need to be taking more than a photo a minute. Yeah, and don't forget these photos, the, the cameras, they didn't have viewfinders, we didn't have, we didn't have all our, well, our iPhones with our, 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 our flashy digital cameras. They had the, uh, I've got, I forgot the name of it. Hasselblad. Hasselblad, thank you. Um, but they had no viewfinders on, and you had to get the exposure and the shutter rate absolutely right. And you do not see any with half, half of Neil Armstrong's head, head cut off. Or every shot is perfect, every shot is perfectly framed. Yeah, they, must, they were not only amazing astronauts and everything else, but they were brilliant photographers as well, because they didn't have viewfinders, and they took thousands of amazing pictures, really quickly as well, by the way, because they had to do all these experiments, and build that car as well, don't forget, they had to build the car. <laughs> One thing you missed out, the, the people that believe, that believe we're on a spinning globe, and I've heard, is that we, we know we went to the moon, and we know the moon's far away and everything, because... They bounce the laser, but they left a little mirror, so we, could bounce, we can bounce the laser and we know that the moon's moving further away or it's moving nearer, I can't remember, every year it moves a couple of centimetres closer and all the rest of it. That's a, that for me is a big reason why, you know, why all this might be true. However, they already did it in 1962. Massachusetts Institute of Technology bounced the laser off the moon. It was then followed by the Russians also bounced the laser off the moon, the Crimean Astrophysical Observatory using a Q-switched ruby laser. Yeah, this is in 1962 in the New York Times on the 10th of May 1962, an area about a mile, about a mile uh, in radius, I think it says, was lit up by the moon. It was lit up on the moon from the Earth. Um, kind of predates the lunar landing, so that's out the window as well. Yeah, we can we can see the reflection. And, you know, we can we can shine a laser on the moon. That was already being done as well. We're moving to more familiar territory for people who uh, you know know about conspiracies. Like I say, it's all connected. I'm sure you're already <coughs> starting to doubt the lunar landings, real, but everything's connected with it. We know about 9/11. Look at again. Look at the symbology and the numerology and everything connected here. Why? Why 30 years? Why not 25 years or 40 years or another number? Why specifically 30 years? Because they could do 9/11. Those are supposed to be L's. Why they look like ones? They don't do anything by half, and they're not even trying to hide it either, by the way. They're not trying to say, oh, it's a secret that the Freemasons were all involved with the Lunon. No, they're very proud of it. They're very, very proud of it. And see here, you know, 33, 33 degree, the, the, the southern right, um, we put our men on the moon. Confirmed Freemasons, John Glenn, Edgar Mitchell, Buzz Aldrin, Gus Grissom, on and on and on and on. on. All Freemasons, all part of the occult, all part of the Brotherhood. Again, numerology and symbology. There were seven missions to the moon. They do like the numbers. Only six made it. One was incomplete. Do we know what number it was? We love the number 13 if we're a cult and Illuminati, although you get... <laughs> it's all coincidence, you know. Um, at the Bataclan, the, 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 uh, the Paris false flag, November the 13th, that's, like I say, false flag doesn't mean that people didn't die, but it was a staged event. The band, the Eagles of Death Metal, uh, also happened to play six songs and they were halfway through the seventh when the incident happened. Yeah, exactly the same. Um, I'll tell you something else about the moon, I don't, I don't want to get too, uh, too involved in any particular thing. You never, you only ever see the face of the moon rotate. So again, we talked about everything else, the other body is round. Well, you say that, but, If, I'll go back here, if you're in Britain, and the moon's here, yeah, so it can be seen in America as well, yeah, and the moon's a big ball, you're going to see a different side of it, just, just as if the guy's on the left hand side, or the guy's on the right hand side, on your, on your side, you're going to see a slight, you're not going to see exactly the same face, just rotating, you, you can see round the ball here, can't you? Yeah. You can see a slightly different angle to these guys, yeah? That never send, ever happens. Send it, send it as far back as you like. Yeah, you're going to see a slightly different side to it. Yeah, you're going to see slightly more around it. It's a, obviously they say it's a coincidence. The moon rotates 
on its own axis exactly the same time as it's all exactly the same rate as it's orbiting around Earth, so we always see exactly the same um, face of it. But all that ever does, you see exactly that same face rotate. You don't see more around it, even five or ten degrees around it ever. All I'm saying, no, I'm sorry, but I mean, if you can, if you can produce evidence for me, then fair enough. All I'm saying, yeah, is that it rotates. Yeah, there is no evidence so far, yeah, that we can see more around it. I mean, they've shown us the dark side of the moon. Well, I'll, I'll come to that in a second. But all you ever see of the moon, and if you can, you know, by all, by all means get in touch, it rotates. It depends on where you are on the Earth. Yes, the moon has a different face, but it's not all it's on, it's rotated on one plane. It never rotates around us. <clears throat> if you're looking at a ball that was all the way away, if you're on that side, you're going to see just slightly different to that side. Doesn't matter how far. Well, I mean, it does obviously at some points, but the moon's fair, you know, it's a, it's a fair distance, it's a, it's a fair size in the sky, it's not a tiny dot like a star. We can see a fair bit of it. If you're thousands of miles that way and thousands of miles that way and it's a ball, you're going to see a slightly different angle of it, aren't you? All it ever does is it rotates its face. So you're in Britain, you'll see it there. Move that way, you'll see it that way. And I'll show you, and you'll see it pretty much upside down. That's all we ever see. We never see it turning that way. And it is near enough to see. Numerology and symbology. All C and I. And the square compasses. Here we have Buzz Aldrin, the second man. Supposedly that walked on the grey dust of Kubrick's film set. Showing off. They don't try and hide it. It's amazing. There's his Miss Masonic ring. He's got his Shriner hat there. And these guys, yeah, they're supposedly praying to the command module. Looks like a pyramid to me. The connections between Ron L. Hubbard, or Elron Hubbard, who started the Scientology movement, Walt Disney, Werner von Braun, rocket scientist, Jack Doug Parsons, also a rocket scientist, Jet Propulsion's laboratory, and Alistair Crowley, who's obviously you know, an arch Satanist, uh, influenced a lot of you know, rock music and, and you know, everything else, sort of the OTO, the Ordo Tempera Orientis. Um, these guys were all, are all connected, they're all in the same brotherhood. Um, the connections between, well, here, here you go. Jack Parsons, uh, the JPL was how obviously NASA got into, you know, got, got into the air in the first place, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Here's Jack Parsons at a Masonic ceremony, you can tell by the floor. And um, again, you can look into this for yourself. Yeah, There's, it's easily, it's not, it's not, you know, it's easily searchable, it's easily researchable information, the connection between Walt Disney. Here we have aboard the ISS. Again, now, now we're getting into the handshakes. Uh, we've got Baphomet all doing it. Yeah, we've seen Bill Clinton do that and Bush and all, all these guys give you that. We know what that means. We know who they're in service to. This is all about occultism. It's all about sun worship. Heliocentrism. It's not science. It's about it's a religion. It's a faith. This is Helios. This is Helios, the sun god. And here, you know, here he is on the badge of Apollo 13. This is all occult religion going all the way back through all Egypt and then back through to Babylon as well. As is Apollo. Apo Apollo, the yeah, obviously. Here's John Glenn, about to go into space for the first time. He's going to be safe though from those solar winds, those thousands of degrees, because he's got a motorcycle helmet and an iPod on. <laughs> Completely safe from radiation. Looking like, looking very handsome there, fella. That, that, you know, honestly, I'd be like, yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll go up to space in some aluminium foil. It's multi. It's a multi. You know, it's cultural programming all the time because so you've got when you go to school you've got a globe they'll show you NASA stuff and images and all the rest of it now we've got fashion designers getting them. this is you know uh, uh, Yves Saint Laurent and, and all, the, all the rest of them in Milan and you can see I mean that's a wetsuit in the middle obviously but it's all it's all the fashions as well so we're thinking about space all the time we've got Star Wars coming out we've got NASA who are doing missions so it's always coordinated I'm sure if you go to the the shops there'll be you know, bunches of magazines on, on the solar system or build your own spaceship or, you know what I mean, they, they always, they, they push it, uh, uh, it's always coordinated. It 
I want to see somebody, one of these astronauts, get in one of these shuttles, rockets, whatever they have nowadays, stick his camera out the window, we'll, we'll lend him our iPhone, give him a hundred quid to, you know, stick his camera out the window, make sure it's charged up for a few hours, and take one long, unedited shot from the ground, stick out the window, so we can all see what it looks like to go into space. There is not one of those videos that exists, and I've done some searches, there were 135 space shuttle missions, and every single one, and even the, the, there was one recently, an ESA launch, wasn't there? Um, I think it was the one that launched Tim Peake into space, the Britain, hey, let's all get jingoistic about <laughs> a Freemason. Um, it cuts, you see it launch, and you might see it from the launch pad, uh, the camera stays there, and it'll show it going up, and then it'll, you've got a camera on board, and it'll show it going up, but after a few minutes, when, it's, when it reaches the, a certain level, it cuts. You either, you either see, you either see a, a picture of the launch pad, goes back to the launch pad for some, as if we want to watch that, or it cuts to a CGI graphic of, a, of what, what, this is what it's going to look like. Just show us it! They can't do it. They can't do it because it's not going into space. Now all these rockets, they always take off, and they always go up for a bit, and then they go on the back, or sideways. Well again, uh, you've got billions of budgets, you're all scientists, you're all really clever. Hopefully you're a lot cleverer than me, you've got you know, all these mathematics degrees, you know, calculus and everything else. Can you not, because I believe rocket fuel is very expensive, so why don't, why don't they go straight up? Well, because it's such, well wait, to, to, to put them on the right place on Earth, at the right time, so that all you have to do is go straight up, straight out, because you're going out. Yeah, go straight up, straight out. They never, ever, ever do it. They always go on the back in the distance. How are we doing for time, are we? About another five minutes. Okay. Last year, it's to say, um, NASA turned NASA turn on the, all of us, we don't hear from them for years. And then all of a sudden, it's, it's time to, um, Oh, we're doing this and we're doing that and we're doing this. Here, we've got a, a, a probe flying by Pluto. So they took a picture of Pluto. Everybody that's open to it. Everybody was always ready for it. It absolutely looks like Pluto. They're taking the mic. Somebody said, is this, a, is this some kind of observational test? People that went to the gym say, is this an observational test? Because these are Atlas stones. These are these medicine balls that we have in the gym and they've just filtered one up and, 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 so, and told you it was a planet. And when you take it into Photoshop, and, and change the levels and what have you. You can do this with, do it with your own pictures and see if, see if the background's smooth. Yeah, I've done, I, I've done it and the, and the background is as, as you'd expect. It doesn't look like you've pasted something in and it's great. I mean, you, you, you can't really see it on the screen, but you'll see it. Um, you see the HD version, but the, the, the background is graded. There, there's several, several shades of black in there. It's not just a probe taking, taking a picture as they tell us it is. Um, <laughs> this is... I mean, it looks like some kind of new domestic appliance of some kind, but it is like this is the Kepler telescope, and it's how we believe there's lots of Earth-like planets out there. It's about the size of a house, and lots of gold foil again, obviously. And here's a picture of the Kepler telescope in space. <coughs> Except it's not Kepler telescope in space, is it at all? Yeah, the, sorry, the um, the uh, thing is gone, but. This is how they do it. You'll read, you'll, you'll get a magazine, it'll have a picture like that, and you'll be reading all about the Kepler telescope and how it discovers planets and, and everything else. And you just assume that, oh yeah, there, there is a picture of in space. You don't think, it's not, they're not trying to pretend that it is, but it's programming and conditioning and mind control all the time. Yeah? Suggestion, suggestion all the time. Images in your head are keep re repeated from school, from, the, from Hollywood, from NASA, from wherever. That's clearly not, that's clearly the same picture as before, and they've just, you know, they've put it onto the dark rift in the sky and added something and, and give it a, a, a kind of, a feeling, a feeling that it's moving, but it's quite clearly not a picture of the satellite in space. There are no pictures of any satellites in space. There are only composite shots like this. Again, if you can find one, I'm happy to buy. I've been looking for quite some time. A lot of people have been looking for quite some time. There are no real shots. They're all composite. Um, yeah, let's try and get this done before the break then. <clears throat> Kepler mission is to find other habitable planets. Presumably, they are, we're screwing up this one. Don't worry about it. We'll find some other to, to go to. We'll all get off just in time, just before we destroy it. Um, and all it does, really, it just looks for dips in light in distant stars. And from that, I mean, that's obviously mathematics is going to give you a list of numbers. Um, what they found so far, 4,696 potential exoplanets orbiting distant stars somewhere. You can see here, they go from anything between a thousand days to three Earth years to go around, right down to a day. 
Now don't forget, all this is is a blipping light. Yeah, it's a, it's a little, it's a star twinkling or, or a little, you know, a little dip being taken out of it. But if it's got an orbit of a thousand days and it's three years, and we obviously want to make sure it's regular, yeah, because that's how the, you know, if it's, if it's not regular, it's not planet orbiting, it's, it's something else. So the, the Kepler telescope needs to then watch it for three years or six years to see two orbits. And make, just to make sure, make, watch it for nine years. Do you know when the Kepler telescope was launched? 2009. So it's only had seven years to find all these planets and make sure that there are definitely planets and it's not just a bit of dust on the lens or what have you. Yeah, but from the point is that from all those numbers and that's all they can do, yeah, it's, you can, they can obviously test the electromagnetic spectrum um, and the timing and all the rest of it. But from that, and again, they don't try and pretend, they don't say this is a real photograph, they say this is the artist's impression of what he's done from the numbers. Now, do you think there's actually any connection between all the list of the numbers that they get, and this is how big it might be, and this is how, and what the artist actually comes up with? No. How can they be? How can they be? Because it's not a photograph. But again, they imply it's suggestion, it's programming. They imply that, but there are other planets out there, but no, but we have no real photographs of any of them. Yeah, even ones you're familiar with. Many people hopefully have got a telescope. Here's a nice picture of Saturn. That's how we think of Saturn. If you think of Saturn, you think of this. Yeah? A bit, bit yellow, obviously, it's a black and white. Oh, no, it's quite yellow up there. Goldy with the rings. Except this is not a real photo photograph. You could tell it's a work of art because up here you've got the actual name of the artist. One guy did the main planet, the other guy did the moons and what have you as well. This is the best photograph I could find from a telescope from Earth of Saturn. So it is up there. There is something up there. There is a light in the sky. But that doesn't look like something you could actually land on. Unlike that. I mean, okay, it's supposed to be gas anyway, but you, you get the difference. That's first hand, that's primary knowledge. Yeah, that's what somebody's taken with their own telescope. This is secondary knowledge. It's our work, it's suggestion again. Same with Jupiter. Yeah, this is what we think of as Jupiter. That is a painting. This is the best amateur telescope I could find of Jupiter. So again, there is a Jupiter, there is a planet in the sky or a wandering star, but we don't know what it is. We don't know that that's millions of miles across and millions and billions of miles away. Yeah, we can see it through the telescope. There is no um, further information on it yet. Most of what we see, this used to be Pluto until the until the latest ones. But all this is artwork. This is supposed to be Mercury. Obviously, you've got Jupiter again. But again, it's all suggestion. That's how it works. It's always suggestion and programming and um, giving you the impression. And it's a multi-level attack. I'll leave it there and we'll have a break. Thank you. How are we going so far? Who's been converted? Who no longer thinks the Earth is a spinning globe? Who's going to at least take some of what I've said so far and go and do some more further research? Because that's all I want. Yeah, I don't, I don't expect people to people to be convinced on one talk. I've obviously got another half to go through. Um, the Hubble Telescope, very, very famous, takes lots of pictures of distant galaxies and stars and planets and everything else. Um, if we see here, Got well, that famous picture of the Earth again that I showed you right at the start, the 1972 Apollo picture. These are all composite pictures showing that, oh look, the Hubble's going to be in space over the curve of the Earth. You're being programmed again. The Hubble telescope it has, a main, it has a main mirror, but right in the middle of that mirror there's a little hole. It, it, sorry, it bounces back, 
to a secondary mirror and then the secondary mirror bounces back into the little hole in the first mirror. Okay, this is what it says. And in that little hole is a bunch of really special, specialised technological um, equipment, cameras, etc, etc, that are going to give you all the pictures of the galaxies. Um, I really like this picture of the Hubble actually because again, well for this one anyway, it's completely flat, plain, Earth in the, in, in, in the, in the distance. Um, the Hubble telescope, all its equipment, it's got a wide field camera which sees three different kinds of light, near ultraviolet, visible and near infrared, they're not simultaneously. The resolution and field of view are much greater than that of Hubble's other instruments. It's one of the newest instruments that's used to study dark energy and dark matter. The formation of individual stars and the discovery of extremely remote galaxies, previously beyond Hubble's vision. Then we've got the Cosmic Origins Spectrograph, the COS. It sees exclusively in ultraviolet light. <clears throat> so we've got near, near ultraviolet visible, near infrared, and actually ultraviolet light covered now. They act something like prisons, they separate the light. Uh, this provides a wavelength thing, fingerprint of the object being observed. It tells us about its temperature, chemical composition, density, and motion. Um, it's basically there to improve its ultraviolet sensitivity. The advanced camera for surveys sees visible light. In other words, it's a camera. It's designed to study some of the earliest activity in the universe, but it's a camera. ACS helps map the distribution of dark matter, detects the most distant objects in the universe, searches for massive planets, and studies the evolution of clusters of galaxies. But it's a camera. It's a camera lens. AS, ACS partially stopped working, and then it had to be, you know, repaired. The space, it's also got a space, imaging, space telescope imaging spectrograph on board. It sees ultraviolet, visible and near infrared. So it kind of does the same things as the other ones, I think. Um, but it's, it's known for its ability to hunt black holes. Uh, it works best with small sources of light, such as stars or quasars, but can map out large objects. It, it, they just talk. It's just gobbledygook. It's just scientific waffle. You'll never read, you'd never read this. You go, oh, right, yeah, the Hubble's got lots of, you know, really special cameras on it, wonderful, yeah, let's have a look at the pictures. You're not going to actually look at it. When you look at it, you realise it's just mind control and programming, because they're not actually saying anything. The Near Infrared Camera Multi-Object Spectrometer, Nick Ross, it's a heat sensor. So it's going to come for, cover the, uh, ilf, the infrared range. Yeah. So there's nothing actually special here. It's just covering infrared, visible, and, you know, ultraviolet light. But they can see distant galaxies, distant stars, dark matter, the formations of the universe, you name it. From all that, yeah, we get pictures like this. Yeah, again, he's just going to send numbers back to somebody, and somebody's going to get a bunch of numbers, and they're going to say, and they're going to get told to make an artist's impression of such and such a galaxy. It's three, three and a half light years away. It's so much across, it's probably, you know, purple a bit, it's got two, so whatever, yeah? So, the point is that these aren't not photographs, yeah? No light has directly hit film or electronic, the electronic equivalent, and, you know, caused, caused uh, you know, images to be impressed. These are all computer-generated pictures. Question is, if the moon landers are faked, uh, as can be clearly proved, why, why are they faking the moon landings? Why are, they, why, why are they doing it? A lot of people say, well, yeah, we know they fake the moon landings. They go this far with the, with the conspiracy, if you like. We know they fake the moon landings, but that's, that's so because they, they're in, they're in, a, they're in a, a race with Russia. <clears throat> or because it's to encourage you know, people to get into science. Um, well, that actually did happen. That certainly did encourage lots of young people to, to get involved, and there's nothing wrong with that. But really, are the rulers ever kind? Do they ever do things for our benefit? These people that are in charge, that have the billions, that run the departments, that own the, te own the corporations, own the textbook company, all, all, the, all the publishing houses, they own everything. Have they ever kind to us? No, they don't do anything out of the goodness of the hearts. These people are evil. We already know this. Um, so what's the real purpose of, sh of, of, of all these, you know, all the space race and the moon landings? I believe it's to show you lots of pictures of a, a globe Earth. Yeah, but if we didn't go on the missions, then where are those pictures from? Yeah. Famous picture of Earth rise from the moon. Uh, it says here, which, which one was it? Did it say which Apollo it was? No. Um, they, they did quite a lot of these shots anyway. But we see the moon in the sky, and the Earth is four times bigger than the moon. So if you're on the moon, you should see the Earth in the sky four times bigger than the moon appears on Earth. Yeah? If you saw Jupiter, where the moon was, it'd look a lot bigger. <clears throat> you can actually test it for yourself. So it's an experiment you can do with, obviously, arc degrees of movement. Um, but it, that should be four times bigger. 
all those shots, the Earth should look a lot bigger. So how can we trust any of these, any of these images? Yeah, that's supposedly the Earth and the Moon. You know, when you start when you start breaking it down, these are all quite clearly CGI's. What started off really accelerated my uh, my research into this is the fact that no video, real video of the real Earth spinning in space, which we'd all like to see, actually exists. There are lots of CGI animations. I'm going to show you one shortly. There should be a whole TV channel. I want you know, we have geo, geo we have geosynchronous uh, satellites and we have. Or, you know, we have all uh, satellites that, that orbit, with the, <laughs> orbit with the Earth, and have orbit, we have satellites that stay still. And those ones that stay still could have a camera on them, and we could, see, we, 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 could, we could see nice pictures of the Earth turning in space, but not one exists. If you can find me one, I will give you £10,000. That's how confident I am, because I've looked, and I've looked, and I've looked, and I've challenged lots of other people to look as well, and we've all been challenged to learn. If somebody come up with them, this, this presentation would not be happening. Because I, I like logic and I like sense and I like common sense and I like proof and I like weight evidence like everybody else. There is no existing video. What you've shown a lot, and I'm sure you could show me, you know, you could show me videos of the Earth moving in space. But this is what you've shown. This is last year from the Discover satellite, the Epic um, camera. This is actually the dark side of the moon. Going past the Earth. There's the Earth spinning. And there's the dark side. I mean, the only problem with that is the moon's supposed to be orbiting the Earth, not just flying straight past it. Your eyes aren't fooled, yeah? You've got your own senses, trust your senses, this is clearly CGI. But you go to NASA's website and they will claim this was taken from a million miles away from Earth by the Discover satellite. You'll notice also that the clouds don't really move. I mean, they move across, but they don't change, don't swirl, they don't change direction. Um, five hours. 3.50 to 8.45 is nearly five hours of time-lapse photography. Those, cl those, those clouds do not move at all. Now, there are some more recent ones, and they're making the clouds move now. They've animated all the clouds, but it still, you know, it still doesn't look any... They've animated the clouds, what we do. It still doesn't look real. A lot of the shots from Earth, it doesn't look like there's any life on Earth either. There's no cities, there's no... I mean, I know we're supposed to be far away, but... It's from the same Discover satellite, very famous, uh, well, picture last year. Uh, the Earth, this is the, the newest, not a composite, it's a real shot of Earth from the Discover satellite. The latest one says 1972, so it's about time they updated it. The only problem with this is, when you look at it, you flip it horizontally and vertically, just to the uh, west of California, you can see it already, there's a word there, and it says sex, and you think, well, is it, is it sex, is it SFX, is it, is it just, is it... Is it, is it coincidence, that, or what? <laughs> eh? Is that coincidence? Well, here's how I know it's not coincidence. Because if you watch The Lion King, you get the same thing, and it's not just... It's exactly the same way of writing it as well. It's the same animator who's done it. They are messing with your mind. Is that his signature? Probably, because here's more of Walt Disney. This is kids. Your kids are being programmed by Walt Disney, who is a part of the occult brotherhood, same as, you know, Alistair Crowley, also Crowley's. But you look at, look at this stuff yourself. Vile filth, You've been, the kids are being programmed with and you don't even notice, and it's the same, same thing with images from Earth. You, again, it's not coincidence. It's, none, of these are co none of these are coincidental. Show that, I've shown that Earth, Earth, Earth. Now, it's, now, the, now the Earth's got even smaller. I was saying before it should be four times bigger, now in the, the latest Japan one from 2014, the Earth's gone tiny again. It's gone even further away. It's like half the size of that one. The moon surface look, I mean, obviously fair enough, it's a different size, but again, we've got a nice curvy moon there as well. I mean, anybody that thinks that that's, that's real, you know, in this day and age. So I was saying before, there are, once, once you put all the shots together, and there's obviously far more shots of Earth than this, um, you start saying, oh, hang on a minute, all, all, the colours of the sea are the same, they're the same in the equator as they are in the Arctic. But I don't know about you, but if I go to the sea at Blackpool, it's kind of, it's a very different colour to if you go to the sea in Australia or the Bahamas or wherever. The sea is a different colour, it's got different, you know, it's true of all the world, it's true of all the land as well. But if you start inspecting and putting them side by side, all these shots of Earth, you realise that none of them are actually true. Every single shot of Earth you've seen all your life it's a CGI, and you can tell, look at America here, look at the size of America, it's taking up virtually the planet. 
2012. These are all official NASA, NASA satellites. These are all, you can find them all through on official NASA sites. The size of America, it's, it's grown, yeah? It's, it's, it's twice the size as it is here. <laughs> it's getting bigger and bigger. They're taking over the planet, man. <laughs> but look at the difference in colours in the in the oceans, but they're uniform all over the world. Yeah, and here we've got you know we've got snow covering half the world here. Yeah? The big freeze in 1975. Everybody remember that? Couldn't walk. Everything was white. Um, I haven't got any. I saw um, when you see half shots. Or the, you know when you see those composites and those CGI's and those animations of the Earth and the shadow of the you know the shadow of the Earth turned and what have you, again it's the opposite. It goes completely black. Well, I'm sorry, but my experience of nighttime, there's street lights and there's you know especially cities and you can see you know the main and there's moonlight and there's you know all the rest of it. It doesn't go completely black, but that's exa again exactly as it looks like to us. Um, so no, to us on on these uh, uh, on these NASA um, images that they're showing us. Operation Paperclip in 1944, very famous, a lot of Nazis uh, went, uh, lots of rocket, rocket scientists who worked on the V2, etc, etc. They were acquired by the United States government, half of them went to work for NASA, the other half went to uh, Hollywood to help the programming of our minds. I was a huge Star Wars fan, very, very disappointed to find out that I'm just being programmed. Again, it's a multi-pronged multi approach to show you in, you know, they're not trying to pretend that Star Wars is real in any way, but again, it's impressing your brain again and again and again that the space and planets and, and spaceships and they're all round and everything else, okay? It's Hollywood. Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, Close Encounters, all of this sci-fi stuff, I loved it all as well, big fan. Um, you know, Kubrick, we've got E.T. <clears throat> so now we've got the ISS. And I look for some, again, best real throw took I could find of the ISS. Does this look solid? Is this like a solid machine to you? Well, we go back to what we already know about 9-11. I think, you know, I, I think there's more than 50% of people now on, in, on the earth know that there's something dodgy about 9-11. You know, because it's, it's, it's our modern day JFK. But <laughs> you've seen the play, the hologram. Why isn't that a hologram? How do you know that's not a hologram? You know that's a hologram. Yeah, because aluminium cannot cut into steel. It's not possible. So these are the shots we see from the ISS all the time. But how do we know these are real? We don't. You don't normally see that from the ISS, you don't see the street lights. Yeah, well, I mean, there's all kinds of, like I say, I've seen some recent, you've got the clouds moving, you've got all kinds of, you know, great, great graphics and all the rest of it. Um, you never see the whole Earth again, it's not supposed to be that high. But i tell you what you don't see from the ISS, which you really should and you never do, is one of the 17,000 satellites that are also supposed to be spinning around up there as well. I mean, I, I'm, I'm quite surprised that we don't see, every so often, explosions in the night sky as two of these satellites hit each other. I mean, you know, <laughs> look how many there are. And like I say, there's some far out and there's some quite close, but you never see them on the ISS. You've never seen them on the just on the other way to the moon. You've never seen them in, as these shuttles go into orbit. They're all supposed to be there, but again, I mean, obviously that's a graphic. They're not trying to pretend it's real. There's no evidence <coughs> for curvature when you use your own senses and your own observations. Yeah, we talk. We can see quite clearly the horizon's flat everywhere, but that's x-axis curve or straightness. Yeah. And people say, well, look, if you, even if we're on a big flat disc, you'd still see the horizon being straight all the way around, depending on how big the disc is. I'm more interested in the next few minutes, a few slides, in the, in the z-axis curve. In other words, the this, this ship's disappearing over the horizon. Yeah? As you go far out, we're supposed to be on a big ball, <clears throat> and wherever you are, you're supposed to be on the top of the ball. Yeah? And I, I know it's a big ball, but obviously as things go further out, they're obviously going to dip behind the curve so we can't see them. That's our general explanation for why ships disappear and things disappear over the horizon. Does anybody know who hasn't studied it? Because I certainly didn't know when I was a glow believer what the equation for the curvature of the Earth should be. Does anybody even know the radius of the Earth or the diameter? That isn't a flat Earth researcher, <laughs> as I didn't know. 
But it should be common knowledge, shouldn't it? Shouldn't, uh, shouldn't engineers, sailors, pilots, astronauts, um, you know, all of these professions, architects, they should all know how much the Earth curves. Because if they're building a rail line over 30 or 100 miles or 200, however long it is, or a canal or all these kind of things, they should know. It should be a common knowledge thing like E equals MC squared. We don't use it every day, but everyone knows E equals MC squared. The Earth curves, there should be, it should be common knowledge. Should be, this is why, this is how you know the Earth curves for sure, because this is the radius and this is how quickly things should disappear. And because they do and you can never ever see them, that's how we know the Earth is going. But that would do for me. But again, the evidence is in the exact opposition to that. The radius of the Earth is 3,959 miles, allegedly, that's the, that's the figure that's given us. Using professional AutoCAD program and Pythagorean trigonometry, it actually comes out to 7.992 inches per mile of distance squared. We'll round it up to eight inches per mile of distance squared. If you go on Google, and you know find out what what's the curvature of the earth it'll say eight, eight inches per mile i think you have to go to the second or third page to say it's eight inches per mile of distance squared the reason there's a problem with that is quite it's quite straightforward really if you go 3959 miles out so the full radius of the earth yeah the drop should be 3959 miles although they say it's slightly ob oblate but it should be there or thereabouts a few times 3,959 by 8 inches, and then divided by 12 for feet, and then divided by 5,280 for miles, you come up with one and a quarter miles. It's a slope. If you go 8 inches for every mile, it's exactly 8 inches, that's just a slope. You need to square the distance to make it parabolic. Because on a circle or a curve, the further you go, the more you're going to dip. Yeah? It won't work otherwise, you have to square the distance. <clears throat> and that's how it works out. So, so, Think about it, over a mile, there's only eight inches of dip. You're not going to see anything. That's, that's, that's it's perfectly reasonable. Same for the second mile. It's going to dip it a bit more because it's two times two, four times eight is 32 inches. You get to the third mile, there's a drop of six feet. But again, you see three miles out, six feet drop, reasonable. It's not when you're getting up here. When you start getting to 30 miles away, which is you know easily visible, you're looking at drops of 600 feet now. Yeah, so anything under 600 feet high, anything under 600 feet high, yes, we have refraction, obviously it depends on you know, your, your observation point and everything else, but all things being equal, if you're 30 miles away, nothing under 600 feet should be seen. 60 miles, you're starting to get into nearly half a mile of dip now, 2,400 feet. Yeah, if you're looking 60 miles out, and you can see, see 60 miles out with the naked eye. Obviously, we're getting into telescope territory here, but 100 miles, very interesting number, 666. Six feet. That's over a mile. So what? One and a quarter miles. If you're looking a hundred miles, you've got a telescope. You can see a hundred miles. There should be a mile and a quarter dip. Yeah. If you're on a globe, and you're in the middle of the globe, <clears throat> basically all around you, and how far out there should be a dip all around you. You'll know like a, a big sloping frisbee away from you. Are you all with me on that? Yeah. Those are the numbers. Further out you go, the more it's going to dip. It's not going to be uniform or linear. Now, people arguing for the globe will use the same argument in both directions. So they'll say, you know it's a globe because we see ships disappear over the horizon. But when we say, well, we can see objects that are far uh, shorter than they're supposed to be, and we can see them from quite a way away, ah, well, that's because of light refraction. Light refraction is bending it round. So it's an argument that's used in both directions just purely because I believe it's a globe and I don't want to take actually any observable evidence as the primary, you know, take the evidence first and then work out the model from it. Because that's what we're doing here, that's what, that's, what, that's what you're doing if you're saying it's a globe anyway. The Statue of Liberty stands 326 feet tall that can be seen from 60 miles away. <clears throat> Obviously the fall is 2,400 feet, it's 326 feet high. So it's been, it, you can see it, if you're on a ship 60 miles away you can see the Statue of Liberty. It's only 326 feet high, but it should be behind 2,000 feet of curve. Cross Lake Michigan from St. Joseph to Chicago is 60 miles. Over 60 miles, to anything under 2,400 feet should not be seen. This is a visual of how that works. You see the blue, obviously the green line is you're straight out. If you're looking straight out, obviously the, the Earth's supposed to curve, so the blue line is where it curves. Anything beyond the blue line should not be seen. Sears Tower is only 450 feet high, it's the highest obviously building in Chicago. 
it's giving you the heights of some of the rest of the um, buildings there. There's quite a famous picture, uh, a guy called Joshua Nowicki, of Chicago from 60 miles away. We shouldn't be able to see any of it. It should be all behind 2,400 feet of curve. Yeah? Now, people say, ah, but you can't see the bottom of the... You know, it's proven that the Earth's curved, because you can't see the bottom of it. But you can't see the bottom of it, because seas and lakes, they wave. They go up and down. They're not completely... I mean, obviously, if it's completely flat and completely clear, then you, you'll, you'll see a lot more of it. But this actually proves... That the, that, the, that the picture wasn't taken from very high above sea level. If it was, you, you, you'd see a lot more of the buildings, like in this next one. From slightly closer, from only 37 miles away, and should be behind 900 feet of curve, I think we can see more than 500 feet of the Sears Tower there, but you can see virtually all of the skyline. Because obviously it's a clearer day, it's a little bit brighter, and obviously the, the waves aren't as choppy. Here's the opposite. There's, the, you know, there's 36 miles of waves in between. Why would we see the whole thing? But we can still see far more of it. It should be 840 feet a drop. You shouldn't be able to see. Oh, you should be able to see less than less than the top half of those. And we've gone to a different city, Toronto, across Lake Ontario, a place called Grimsby. Obviously not in Lincolnshire. 37 miles away. Should be behind 900 feet of curve. The CN Tower is 1,800 feet tall. You should be able to see only the top half of that, and hardly any of the rest of Toronto. Can we see pretty much the whole skyline there? Again, you can check this out for yourself. I, I, I had a, I, you know, you can get half a dozen of these pictures from various places all around this bay. Yeah, this is actually taken from the red lines there. It's actually Grimsby's here, so it's actually a little bit further than this red line. But you can get pictures of, from Toronto from all over this beach. Yeah, and you can see way more of it than we should be. Now, people say, "Oh, well, that's light refracting, bending it round the curve." It doesn't look like a mirage. I've seen mirages. They're inverted or they're wavy. We know what a mirage looks like. That's just, that's, we can see it in the distance. Shouldn't you be squaring the 8 rather than the 37? Why? That's what said, No, it's 8 inches. Squared? No, per mile of distance squared. Yeah, you need to square, you square the distance. Yeah, because obviously the further you're going out, the more it's going to drop. 81 miles away from Genoa, that's the Isle of Gorgona, it's only 70 feet above sea level. Um, it, I'm not entirely sure how, how high we are, uh, but again, you, you, can, you can check, I've done, I've done it with, with these. But we shouldn't be able to see anyone, or we shouldn't be able to see the tip, but we can see most of the island. It should be behind 4,300 feet of curve, it should have curved away by now, we can still see it. We'll bring it closer back home, the Isle of Man, from the File Co, 61 miles away. And obviously we've got the, is the, uh, the Walney, in it? The Walney, Walney, Walney wind turbines. And again, we can't just see the tops of the turbines. We can see you know, virtually all of them. From 61 miles away, Snaefell is 2,030 feet high. 2,034 feet high. So that's the highest point on the Isle of Man. 61 miles away should be 2,480 feet of curvature. Should be, you know, half a mile below the horizon. From Cleveland's. I've seen this in only in certain Absolutely. 100%. Yes, I agree 100%. And it's the same, look, we can see it from London, Dudley. 75 miles away. Starts getting interesting when you go, when you start getting towards the 100 mile mark. We're talking over a mile of dip now. This is the uh, Isle, Isle of Oahu, taken from Kaui. Kaua, Kaua. Thank you. In Hawaii. It's 90 miles away. Again, you can see... You know, apart from you know whatever bit the waves are hide, and we can see a lot of that island. And here's here's the numbers for it. It should be behind 5,400 feet a drop. Its elevation is 4,003 feet, so we shouldn't even be able to see the tip of it. You can see nearly all of it. <clears throat> we can see the Isle of Man from Bolton. Okay, it's up Winter Hill where you've got the big transmitter. Yeah, I'm going to take questions at the end. Um, but you can see Blackpool Tower quite clearly there. Then you can see the wind turbines. And again, we can see all the, all the wind turbines. And we can see the Isle of Man behind it. And again, it's the whole of the island. Excuse me, are these like measurements and photographs taken at different times of the year, at different angles? Yeah, but I mean, well... Um, Not that I know of, and none of these people were trying to prove, and I certainly wasn't, none of these people are trying to prove that the Earth was 
that the Earth is a flat or globe or anything else. They're just taking photos, nice photos of pl 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 places in the distance. That's all. Yeah. Nobody was. No. Yeah. I, I've taken these to get real. It's tertiary knowledge. Yeah. But these people do not have an agenda. They weren't trying to prove that the Earth was flat or a globe. Yeah. All I'm saying is that we can see things far further in the distance. This is the Sierra Nevada range from Mount Diablo in California near San Francisco. It's 160 miles away. Yes, we're up a mountain. Yes, they're up a mountain. But you can see, again, a lot of the bottom of the mountains. You can, you can see the snow-capped tops, and then we can see the rest of the mountains as well. 160 miles away, this should be, should be behind 17,000 feet of curve. Again, yes, you might be able to see the top of it, but not all of the mountains. And here's the... This one I found so far, this is my record so far. I'm sure it'll keep on growing. This is the reunion island from the Isle of Mauritius. It's 149 miles away. It's a long, long, long way away. And once again, we can see the peak, but we can also see most of the rest down. This is quite clearly a very, very good observational day. Very clear, very calm. Um, the highest peak on reunion island is 3,072 meters tall, it's just under two miles. 149 miles away, everything should be behind 2.8 miles of curvature. Should have curved way, way away. And again, it's not just the tops we can see, we can see much more. We can see a lot more, you know, 2,000 feet or so of that. We can see far more. That's what I'm saying about the Z axis curve. It's not there. It's not there if you watch a boat out to sea and then get a telescope on it, it'll come back into view again. Yeah, it's perspective and it's obviously the limits of our, our, our eyesight, but it's also conditions as well, quite clearly. Yeah, heat, haze, condition, what have you. Visible conditions do check. But the point is that photographs have been taken, I've just shown you a dozen photographs from starting at 30 miles, 60 miles, 90 miles. Now we can, see, we can see 150 miles in the distance and it should well have disappeared behind the curve of the globe. <clears throat> taken from a V2 rocket, this is the first satellite, uh, this is the first image of, uh, uh, you know, from, from very high up, 65 miles. It's flat, flat horizon, back to the x-axis here. But somebody's kindly done <coughs> a, uh, you can see, I don't know if you can make it out on here. Yeah, you can just about, there's a purple line which shows you where the curve should be if it was curving. Uh, 65 miles up, there's 720 miles of horizon. This is where the curve should be if it was there. It's flat, it's straight. Who's mentioned, we've mentioned Felix. Felix Baumgartner's famous jump in 2012, the Red Bull jump from, from the edge of space. It was a massive event. And I feel conned, because I, I was there, oh, well, great, looking for, you know. I feel conned, because it was just programming. It was just to get us to believe, it was just reinforcement all the time on this ball, because this is a genuine shot from the video. Go through the video yourself, you can see the still. There it is, flat horizon. We know what it looks like when it comes out. It's all, it goes all bendy and curvy, but it's the same height, 128,000 feet, and again, that's actually, this is a separate jump, this one on the right. It, only, it was about 80,000 feet. There was a, t a test or what have you. But again, flat horizon. <clears throat> have you ever seen big bodies of water, lakes, seas, oceans, rivers, bend into the shape of a ball? We can, might, you might be to get you know, little raindrops. But as soon as you pour, if you go to a swimming pool, well, it's nice when you see a nice big, it's a nice big swimming pool and it's all flat and solid and uh, you know it's a, it's a calm surface it's flat that's what water does but if you believe that we're on a ball then water must somehow curve into the shape of a ball the, the pacific ocean here we go takes up quite a third of the earth so so somewhere there must be a big body of water that curves have you ever seen it with your own eyes any first-hand primary evidence of ever seeing a lake or a sea or an ocean doing that with you float over it, you see it over it. That's what we see water do. It waves and it ripples, but it's flat, it's just big flat. You, you can, you, if you have a small tray of water, it will find a flat. If you have a swimming pool, it'll find a flat. If you have a lake, it will find flat. It's flat all over the place. But if you believe a ball, at some point it must curve. But that's not what we experience with our own eyes or our own observations. Flat everywhere. The Suez Canal is 120 miles long, it has no locks. If it wasn't flat, the water would drain out the other end. <laughs> 120 miles, you work it out for yourself. 120 times 120 times 8 inches, divided by 12 for feet. There should be a lot of curve there. There isn't. Rivers, the longest rivers in the world, the Nile and the Amazon, are over 4,000 miles long, and they have about 5,000 metres drop from source to obviously out in the sea. That's 5,000 metres, what's that, a couple of miles? 
but it's 4,000, it virtually goes the whole, well, it's over the whole radius of the Earth. But don't forget, it come, they come from the mountains as well, and those mountains are probably 5,000 metres higher anyway. Yeah? So what's the actual elevation of the longest rivers in the world? The flat. But again, if we're on a ball, where's the Nile? Where's Africa? Yeah, the Nile should go, it should curve round, should have massive differences in elevation from source to mouth. But it doesn't. None of the rivers do. In Russia, there is a 395 mile long lake which freezes over every winter. That should have 19.7 miles of curve to it. Doesn't happen. No frozen lake. If you've ever seen a frozen lake again, you, you, you shouldn't be able to see after a few miles, it should dip away. You know? So really, I mean, you might still think we're on a globe, we're on a ball, but there should be all these flat patches all over it. All over the place. Yeah. But we see it perfectly round in every single image. From a plain window, the horizon is flat. There's 36, 34, 34, 35, 30 odd pictures of a flat horizon. The horizon never falls below eye level either. So whether you're in, you know, on the ISS or where the image is from a V2 rocket or from a plane or from a mountain or from wherever, the horizon always stays at eye level. It always rises to meet us. If we're on a ball, and you can do this yourself after, or get a ball or what have you, if you put yourself right down on the ball and watch the horizon, as you rise, you can see quite clearly the horizon line should drop down very, very quickly. It never does. Huge flat places on Earth, everybody's aware, if you've ever watched Top Gear, the Bonneville Salt Flats, where everybody goes racing, but there's even bigger ones in South America, uh, is it uh, Ethiopia, uh, but the Salad, Salad uh, Yama in, in Bolivia, they've gone for 4,000 square miles, they've gone for hundreds and thousands of square miles, big flat places on Earth, yeah, famously, flatter than a pancake. And the evidence is all around us. Um, this is a really, really good video to watch, it's called The Ama Amazing Flight of a Balloon to the Edge of Space. And if you watch it, you will see, because those are clouds there. This isn't, this isn't the ocean, this is clouds. And what have we got here? That's a hot spot from the sun. Now if the sun's 93 million miles away, yeah, but, but massive, how is it causing a heat spot on here? Obviously this is a still from it, you can watch the video for yourself, but this is what it does, there's minutes and minutes of this video as it spins around, you can see it again and again it will blow your mind because you'll see the sun isn't that far away at all because it can't be causing a heat spot on the clouds if it's 93 million miles away if it's massive it should all be coming in at the same angle there should be no target for it that is obviously a spotlight it's obviously got spotlight properties to it have a look at the video for yourself primary knowledge or secondary knowledge you're going to use your own senses, your own observances, your own experiments hopefully, or you're going to believe what you've been told just because that's what everybody believes. I've seen the sun look massive on the horizon because of the obviously the, the, uh, the effects, the atmospheric the effects of the atmosphere. Um, but I've also seen it look like this as well. Again if the sun's 93 million miles away how come it's so small there and it's you know two or three times as big here, not obviously these bright ones but these two. This is the time lots photography. Again, you can have a look for yourself. Take time as yourself. Sometimes the sun gets bigger. Sometimes it goes, you know, really red on the uh, on the horizon. Sometimes it get, but it changes size. But it, again, if it's 93 million miles away, it should be consistent size in the sky all the time. It looks like it's passing by and going away. It's coming near and going away. It's just another example of it. Tiny on the horizon there. It's four times bigger now. Now we get to coincidences and numerology and all the rest of it. The Earth tilts at 23.4 degrees. That leaves exactly 66.6 .6 degrees to the vertical. <laughs> okay. These, they don't do things about coincidences. I've, I've, I've mentioned the moon rotation at the same time. Solar eclipses, the sun and the moon, uh, sorry, the sun's 400 times bigger and exactly 400 times further away. That's what we're told. Could just be the same size and about the same place and the moon's passing in front of the sun. Yeah, that's the, that's, that to me is Occam's razor. That's the simplest explanation. You know why? Because we see the sun and the moon in the sky at the, exactly the same size. So they can tell us all, all kinds of other explanations, but they can't prove it. It's funny how the Earth is in the Goldilocks zone. 
It's in the perfect, perfect place for the temperature, for life, for water. It's got all these right elements to it. Everything's perfect about it, but somehow it's not that special. That we've got to send, we've got to spend billions and go and look for million, you know, uh, loads of other planets to live on. But it's, but it's perfect. It's just the right pressure, just the right temperature, just the right atmosphere. It's perfect for it, but it's not that important. We'll finish off because we've come to the end of it now, but I'll finish off with the occult connections of the science gods that we've all been taught to um, bow down to. Galileo, Newton, Einstein, Copernicus, all these greats. Yeah. And it turns out most of them are occultists and religionists and alchemists. Einstein was a, famously a patent clerk. Uh, he didn't have any qualifications. He was a dunce at school. And the reason for that was... It wasn't very clever. This, he's a Jesuit handler, George Lemaitre. He is a Catholic priest. He invented the Big Bang. But he, actually, he, he, he didn't invent the Big Bang because it was invented by the Kabbalists that I'm going to show you next. Um, but certainly it had a huge hand in what we see as modern, modern cosmology. Kabbalism, if you're aware of that, they again are proud of, in the 13th century, in the book of the Zohar, coming up with the evolution, the Big Bang. Um, and heliocentrism, well, heliocentrism is more Hermeticism, it's more Copernicus. The connections between, well, what we do, I'll tell you what we do is we go, yeah, politics is terrible, bankers are terrible, um, you know, figures in history are terrible, all these people are terrible, but science, no, no, science is right. There's, there's nothing wrong with it about the sciences that are told. We won't look for occult symbolism or connections with all these, but you can see the squaring of the compasses all, all over the handiwork of this. The Copernicus, <clears throat> was the main guy who started off the revolution. His book on the revolutions of the celestial spheres changed, you know, thousands of years of thinking about the Earth being completely still, as you can experience it for yourself every single day of your life, and the, obviously the bodies move, move in the heavens above us. That's what your senses experience. Copernicus uh, changed all that round, but he didn't use any science. There's no science in his book. He got his ideas from the Hermetica, from Hermes Trismegistus. And it basically says how the sun sits enthroned in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the solar system, and we all orbit around it. What's that sound like to you? That sounds like sun worship. It sounds like sun cult to me. Because later on, I'm going to show you. Hoyle, uh, Fred Hoyle was another astronomer. Royal. He said there's no difference in, in the mathematics, whether it's geocentric or helio. So whether the sun moves around the earth, or the earth moves around the sun. The mass works the same, exactly the way. The connections between just just from, just from the imagery. Yeah, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, um, you know, uh, have a portrait done with a big 33 on it or, or a triangle with an eye or anything like that. I wouldn't want to be connected or associated with any of that stuff because, you know, I'm, I'm not really into that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm working for the other side. Um, so, but Copernicus obviously had no problem with the square, with the square and compass, yeah, um, with the big wheel here, we've got the big sun wheel and we've got the Mercury sign as well. Yeah, all leads back again. I'll, you know, you, you can you can um, investigate that more for yourself. The Book of Thoth by Alistair Crowley, Freemasonry with the sun over the head. Yeah, as above, so below. Yeah, um, one of the reasons why Mercury, because it can rise in the morning and the night, so it's also hermaphroditic. Uh, both sexes, which is obviously is Baphomet as well, which we know as the the, the breasts and the penis. It goes on and on and on. It's all about cult sun worship. You can trace it back to Babylon. You can see all the different gods going through it. But there is no signs to Copernicus's um, on the revolutions of the spheres. Uh, it's, it's a philosophical tract and it's all based on the Hermetica. We live in a sun worshipping cult. It's in religion. Yeah, it's above the door of number 10 Downing Street. The Nazis used it. Obama used it. Yeah, the CIA used it. The cult of Ra. <clears throat> China, America, it doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter which country you choose, and it might not be the flag, it might be the armed services or the defence force or, you know, the, uh, what, ha what have you, but they've all got it. And it's not sun worship, they're not actually worshipping the sun in the sky. You know, people say, well, that's quite natural, because in ancient days we all used to worship the sun, it was the giver of life. But all these symbols are in religions here. Yeah, the Jesuits, Luciferianism, Theosophy, etc, etc. Couple more. Gravity is a god because it's the answer. It's the magic answer to everything. Why? How does this? How does the? How does the Earth keep us on, but it still spins around? It's still orbits and all gravity. 
How's the moon, how's the type of gravity? Why doesn't the moon fly off to the sun? Because the sun's got bigger gravity. It's the way gravity works, don't worry about its gravity. Gravity is the god that explains everything very, very magically. But it's not needed, by the way. There is no need for gravity whatsoever if we're on a fixed stationary plane and the, the heavenly bodies are, are simply going above us. It's not needed. The reason why you don't fall off is because you're denser than the air that un underneath you. It's just, again, Occam's race. It's a straightforward explanation. Now, if we're travelling around the sun, every si uh, well, every, obviously every 12 months, on this side, yeah, if we've got the big sun in the middle, we're not going to see any stars on the other side. We're not going to see the, be able to see the constellations on the other side because the sun's in the way. Yeah, even though we're, obviously we're, we're, we're turned away for our night, yeah, as we come round, it doesn't matter what's over there because the sun's in the way. It's a massive big block. It's blocking out all the starlight. So really, every day, every, week, every few days, as we come round the sun, we should see new constellations, new stars all the time, each, each year. So for a couple of months of the year, constellations should actually disappear. That's not what happens, though, is it? The same constellation in the sky, but the whole sky rotates. Yeah, it, becomes, it comes lower to the horizon, higher to the horizon, etc. throughout the year. We don't, whole constellations don't disappear for months at a time. Some, some, go, but some go slightly below the line, but we don't see new ones. We don't see new ones as we're travelling around the sun. We're on the completely, the different side, uh, completely different side of the sun. We can't see anything towards the sun on the side, that side of the sun. We have to wait till those that were behind the sun have now come into line. Have now come, out, you know, have now come into our line of vision. They're no longer being blocked out by the sun as we go around. They should change. The constellations should change that we can see in the sky. And yes, they do to a certain extent because they dip, they dip below the, the horizon as far as we're concerned. But there should be new constellations every so often. And obviously, we're, we're coming to the end now. I'm just trying to rush through the, little, the very last few slides. Check out Airy's failure. Very famous astronomer, lawyer, George Airy. He put water in a telescope because its water will slow light down. And he wanted to say, it's called Airy's failure because he detected no change he didn't have to tip the telescope yeah but they never went to the logical conclusion with this that quite clearly the earth is still and the stars are moving otherwise you would have had to tip the telescope as the um as as, as the earth moved to to get the starlight in but i get have a look at it for yourself Aries failure Aries success there are some very famous experiments that we've done on that and then Einstein came out with, you know, the relativity and gravity and all the rest of it to, to, to show it all. Look up the michelson morley experiment, look up the Sany Sanyak experiment as well. These all proved non-movement of the Earth, no detectable movement of the Earth. The threat oil I've already mentioned, no difference, no physical difference. So why? why, why what, what, what have they got to gain? You know, why bother? Well, as far as I'm concerned, if you've... Once you've done research, and, and if you come to the same conclusion that uh, myself and thousands of others have done, it overthrows heliocentrism, it overthrows the Big Bang, it over, overthrows evolution, it overthrows everything we, we thought we knew about the world. Because without there being a big universe and billions of years for the universe to exist in, there can't be any evolution. So it is... You know, people say, well, it is and it isn't important. I, I, I'm not really bothered about the shape of the Earth either. What I am bothered about is how it came about. And it didn't come about by accident. It can't have, because everything's so Goldilocks. But also, evolution cannot exist without billions of years. And if we're not in a vast universe and we're not spinning around and all the rest of it, then there is no billions of years for evolution to have happened. So what do they have to gain by lying about it? Well, the whole world, everybody. Heliocentric theory by putting the sun at the centre of the universe made man appear to be just one of possible hosts of wanderers drifting through a cold sky. It seemed less likely he was born to live gloriously and to attain paradise upon his death. Less likely too was it that he was the object of God's ministrations. Because it goes hand in hand with being lost and alone in a universe, we've just been left to it. And especially you know, with the rulers and everything that's going on, we're, we're kind of defenceless and we've got to face them alone. It makes you feel even more powerless. By removing the Earth from the motionless sense of the universe, the entirety of astrology of science of consciousness co co coveted and he's obsessed by the elite is made null and, and void. <coughs> astronomy, well, I should say, I think, rather than astrology. If the Earth is the centre of the universe and all the planets revolve around us, then birth charts, alignments of astrology are measurable, calculable, repeatable, and scientifically variable, verifiable. But if the Earth is just one of billions of planets revolving around billions of stars in billions of galaxies, astrology disappears into the realms of pseudoscience believed by Arabian ancestors. Keep us locked in, mind program, mind control. Uh, 
You weren't created, you're not special. And there's nobody looking after you. God's, God either doesn't exist or he doesn't care. Or he's just not powerful enough to have over these evil things. These are all lies. This is the whole point of telling you that you're on a spinning globe. It all goes hand in hand. The whole house of cards falls down. But you obviously have to do your own research first. Take, obviously, the jumping off points that I've started with tonight. And, 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 and you know, obviously, and, and investigate them for yourselves. Don't take my word for it. Because, like I say, it goes hand in hand. The famous quote from the usual suspect is the devil convinced the world that he doesn't, he doesn't exist, which is true, but his main goal was to convince the world that God doesn't exist through all these theories. And I'm just going to end now with what I, where, I'm, where I'm currently up to, why I think the shape of the earth is, and I think it's the shape of what you see every day, the shape, the shape of the map. If you go on time and day, you can see where the sun, the sun and the moon are every day, and it shows you how you know, parts are lit up and parts are still in darkness. The sun and the moon go across east to west. When they obviously finish at the west, they appear right again at the east again. Exactly as our experience tells us. Fall, nobody falls off the edge. People don't fall off the edge. And if this, is, if this map's true, the problem, with it, the problem with this model, of course, is that if it didn't work perfectly, you wouldn't be able to prove it. Because <laughs> obviously, if, if you could see a, some kind of anomaly at the eastern edge or at the international date line or wherever, then it wouldn't work perfectly. And you also wouldn't be able to con us that it's a continuously spinning ball. If you think about it, it works, but it works on both models. If you fly from California to Japan, you can do it that way, or you can obviously do it that way. If it's a circle, if, if, the earth, if a flat earth is just a flat circle, they can't fool everybody. You can't fool people that way, because it, the, 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 the observations and, the, and the, uh, uh, our experiences will be very different. Now, east to west is very easy to sort out, but if you have a look, as, if you have a notice as well, every single map that is like this is exactly, and this is what, um, this is why, why I've got very, uh, uh, a lot of time for this. It's, it's exactly twice as long as it is high. Exactly. Twice as long as it is high. So I'm thinking, well, hang on a minute. If the east-west is quite, is quite straightforward, but how about north and south? You don't go north from Russia and end up in Antarctica. That's not anybody's experience. If you go north from Russia, where are you going to end up? Sorry? Canada. Yeah, Canada. If you go north from Russia, where you expect to, you end up in Canada. Same with this. And what you have to do <coughs> is turn it upside down at the north, north, south. So if you have a look, we're running east, west. Yeah, it's, it's all the right way up. East, west, east, west, east, west. Continuous strip. Uh, this is just showing you, obviously, how it works. There's only one Earth, but as you go north and south, it goes upside down, then it goes the right way around again, then it goes upside down. So in other words, if you're in Russia here and you go north, you're going to end up exactly where you expect in Canada. If, you go, if you're in the Antarctic, you go to Australia and you go south, and you go south over the Antarctic and you keep going south, you're going to end up on the other side of Antarctica, coming up the other side and going north again. So it works exactly the same way as if you were on a ball. Yeah? But it's a continuous loop all the way in every direction. So you can never fall off the edge. It's always continuous and you will always expect, you will always end up where you expect to, where you expect to, whichever direction you go in. Like I say, it's only one Earth. There's only one there's only one, one part of it. it, doesn't go on you know, forever and ever, but it will repeat round. This is where I'm up to so far, I'm, uh, I'm always open to better information if someone has you know, better models, I'm hoping that they will come across. The whole point of doing this is to show you, A, that the, 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 the Earth's not a spinning globe, but B, that the, the popular flat Earth model, the circular model, doesn't work either. And we should be aware of that. And, 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 if, and if some, I mean, I, I can't prove this, but, but, I, but uh, you know, if you go east, you're going to end up in the west. If you go north, you're going to end up in, in the other north. Um, and like I say, I'm happy to. I'm 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 open to you know more and better information on that. As far as I'm concerned, the big truth that they're trying to hide is that we're in an enclosed, created, looked after. Well, it's not looked after, but it's it's watched. Every single one of us is loved. Every single one of us is cared about. Every single one of us was created for a specific. Or, for, or for, for a purpose, out of love. And that's the truth that they're trying to hide with the flat earth. They want you to make, make you feel insignificant, they want you to make you feel like nobody cares about you, um, and that the world is going to hell in a handcart. But that's not actually true. It is going to hell in a handcart, but there will be something after that as well. I don't want to get into that. Uh, I want to thank you very much for having us tonight. I hope that it leads to further research for yourself, further debate, lots of further discussions. Keep an open mind, and I'll see you all again. All the best. Hey.
Uh, not sure. Don't know. A couple of miles. If you're seeing that, it's, it's got to be more than a couple of miles field of view. So where you're seeing the buildings and where you're seeing the island, you should see them curved. If you're on a curve. Away from us, you mean? You, well, you should. You wouldn't see. Them yes. If you were looking that way, all the images. Yeah. You would see the buildings curved. Away yes. So that the centre of gravity was towards the centre. If you look at a big right. city, a big, yeah. you know, it's looking like a big long city. The, the buildings should curve at some point. If it's. With the island, you should see the islands curve. Yes. Well. Yeah. Yes, very, very possibly. No. Go on. Sorry. You used to think, you know, everybody's like, the conspiracy is very significant. Yeah. But you think that, you know, we're all sort of individually in love and everything like that. Yeah. So, uh, okay, I, 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 then I need to qualify it. Um, there are obviously drastic changes coming. Anybody that's got, you know, half an ear or half an eye open is well clear. We are heading towards some major, uh, you know, I, I, you know, this isn't the, obviously the, 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 the focus of this talk, but we are he heading some seriously major disruption and changes that we're, we're going to be prepared for. This is hopefully why we've all been woken up and we've started searching for things outside of our mainstream education and mainstream media. Uh, because we know something's going and something's happening. And it looks like another generation generation, one more generation, which is 15, 20, 25 years ago, in our lifetimes. So, I don't think it's going to, well, you know, the world's not going to end as we know it, but there are going to be serious major eruptions and serious, serious changes coming. And I, I, I again, I, I believe that, you know why? Because I believe, I now believe, and I wasn't brought up that way, but I now believe in the Bible. And I believe the truth of the Bible. And you know why I believe the truth of the Bible is because the Bible has the exact description of the earth as I've just presented tonight. And it matches all observable evidence. If it didn't, then, you know, it'd be, it'd be in the trash. But also, the Bible doesn't believe in evolution either, fully. Enough. But that's that's the only reason why, because 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 the Bible is two thirds prophecy, and it's two thirds prophecy on the end times. It's our handbook and instruction. You know, so if you if you don't read, that's fine. You know what I mean? That you, you, it's not you don't get a fat war issue against you if you don't read it. But there's a there, there's a manual that's telling us what's going to happen in the next 20, 30, 40 years. Why not find why not find out what's going to happen? Let's be let's be let's be forewarned and forearmed. Oh, I only believe in the King James Bible, and again, that's a whole, that's a whole, you know, the history of Bibles and you know where they've all come from and everything else. That's a study in, in itself, and I don't take that lightly. I, you know, I, I want to know. I want to study. You can see how much, how much, you know, research and, and, and input I put into something to make sure that it's correct. And if it's not correct, I'm happy to stand. I'm, you know, I'm happy to stand corrected. It's not about being the smartest man or what have you. It's just I want the truth. I want the truth. I want to know what I'm supposed to be doing. I want to know why I'm here. And just those are the same questions I've asked since I was 10 years old. Um, could you go back to the previous slide, please? Uh, the square earth? Yeah, that one, yeah. Yep. So if the sun and moon are sort of heading across that, what happens when they get to the edge, that edge? Yeah, they could just appear. They used to go. So, so if it was a round globe, it would work better than... than it works exactly the same. But what, do, what difference does it make if the world's been created? If I'm God, or, or God, if God exists and you, and you want to create the world, he'll create the world exactly as, as he wants to do. The point is, from our, from our perspective, forget all the... You've got images in your head. You've got lots of programming in your, in your head. But from our... If you take, what, what can I observe from, my, from where I am looking out? What experiments can I do? What observations can I do? What focus can I look at? What studies can I do? That will only be primary knowledge to prove beyond doubt. Okay, go on. I'm asking, if the sun and moon goes across there, say it takes whatever, how long it takes. 24 hours. And then it gets to that side. Mm -hmm. And then just suddenly dash back across. Instantly appears and at the other side. Again, and just suddenly dash back, like a typewriter thing. Uh, that's it, that's, that what? doesn't make sense. Occam's razor, like you mentioned before. Yeah. It makes more sense if the ball just goes round, if we go round the sun. And the you keep using the word sense. Yes. But these are not our senses you're using. It's it's a, this is logic. This is this is it's intuition and logic in your you know in your head. You're saying it feels it feels better that it's just going round. You know that that oh you know just just leave it as we're told. Yeah, we're a spinning ball and we're going around the sun and that's why the sun rises and falls. Well, I've got another explanation for it and the the the, the point the point is like you know obviously I just spent two hours showing you that there's no observable first hand evidence that we're living on a ball. Things don't disappear over the curve. There is no sensor evidence that we're moving. 
The only evidence that you've got that we're moving is seeing the sun and the moon in the sky. But what your actually senses are seeing, your senses are seeing the sun and the moon move, you but you're still. You also said you don't see different stars throughout the year. You do, because I mean, at the moment you can see Orion in the night sky. Mm -hmm. In the summer, you can't because it's the sun's in that part of the sky. Because well, it, go, it goes night time, doesn't it? But hmm? it goes to the horizon. No, it's, 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 because we've gone round the other side of the sun, so we can't see it because it's behind the sun. It, but that's not what happens, though. It goes to the horizon. It goes below the horizon. In my observations, there are, there are. I mean, as far as I know, there are no constellations that only appear for nine or ten months of the year, or eight, nine, nine, or, or a whole bunch of them, as as we go around the sun, that appear from behind the sun. We don't. The majority of the equatorial constellations can only be seen when we're on the right side of the sun. When we're the other side of the sun, you can't see them because the sun's light. Okay, well, that, that, that's according to your opinion. It's not my, it's not, you why know, that's not what I've seen from, from my own research. I don't know yet. Why can't we see them I, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that somebody will go and investigate and find out because there are, you know, the the, the not every single question has been answered. All I wanted to do tonight was 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 you know show you enough evidence to make you extremely sceptical about what we've been told about the globe Earth. Well, I think I have with, with many, but thank you. As well, yeah. Five hundred years of science in the other way. Yep. One hundred percent. Give me your alternative model. We've all been through that. I think, you know, it's, it is worth paying heed to. It really is. Yeah. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Can I just say one obvious one, if you're not sure as well? If the, if the Earth is going around the sun, why is it going around the other side? Why is it going around the other side? Midday would be midnight. Midday is midnight. Possibly, but there's a, diff the possibly, but there's a diff the difference between side real day, which is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and I think 59 seconds, is it? And the solar day, which is 24 hours. Um, I didn't have that slide in, but there's, there's, a, there's an explanation. You know, I'm, I, I, you always try to look at it from both sides, from how it's supposed to be from the globe, from and, and how and how you know what's the alternative model from what we can see. So you have to kind of play devil's advocate at both times at the same time. It's a very, it's a very, um, it, it's a massively interesting subject to get your head around. Yeah. Uh, the flat Earth theory doesn't explain why we have light and day at the same time on Earth. Because right now it'll be daylight at the other side of the world. Yeah. Because In Australia. Sphere, yeah. And, 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 it, and that's the side that's facing the sun. Now well, we're well, that's the explanation you've been given, but here's the, here's the alternative explanation, yeah? This is the sun, and you see this here, this line, I mean, it's, it's, it's better actually on the other slide. Let me go back one. There we go, we can, see, we, can see, we can see it better there. We can see the limits of the sun's light and which parts are in darkness and which parts are obviously in light. As the sun goes across, it has a spread, and that spread changes. This sun obviously goes it goes up all the way up to the Tropic of Cancer for our summer, all the way down to the Tropic of Ca uh, Capricorn. Obviously, this is the this is the southern summer, our winter, um, but it goes across, lighting up different parts of the Earth, um, and we know this is accurate because of timeanddate.com, or because because look, if it's supposed to be, you know, you can take it. What I'm saying is, you can take a snapshot. If you know, so if you know somebody in Florida, and you can make sure you can phone up and say, is it, is it dark where you are right now? Yeah, and, uh, you know, anybody at any point of the Earth can say, hang on a minute, that's wrong. It's light where I am, it's dark, it's in the morning, etc, etc. So, that's one explanation, for sure, and that's the explanation we've been but here's the other one. The sun th throws, it's a spotlight, but it throws a lot, a lot of light, and here's the shape of its light. And you can tell the shape of its light any time, any day, go on to timeandday.com, and it'll show you exactly the position of the sun, and the moon, oh, where they are on the earth, and, and which parts are lit up. And you can ring somebody, wherever you like, we've all got you know, Facebook and social media, and you say, you're in Australia, is it, is, it, is it definitely daytime over there at the moment? Yeah, yeah, I can see the sun in the sky, great. You know what I mean? That can be confirmed. 
tertiary knowledge. So there's two explanations for the same thing, same observable thing, but why pick one model over another? So does the sun go from one side to the other and then back again? No, it goes from one side to the other, east to west, and then as soon as it hits the, the west, you know, the, the, the west, it'll instantly appear at the east again. It's an infinite space loop. Pac-Man. Uh, maybe the international date line. They, they, maybe, maybe the international date line. There are lots of there are lots of um, lots of questions. Lots of you know that I, I I could I could have done this talk for six or seven hours. There are so many other uh, aspects to it. Some people will never accept it. I don't I don't I don't I don't care what evidence you present. I'm not going to accept it. A lot. Of, hopefully, the bulk of the people will see the information and go and do your own research on it. Thank you very much for having us on. Still got more? We've still got more? I'll speak to you after. Let's, let's call it a day. Thank you.